All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, this is, yeah, welcome to the BI reporting and business use case uh, track of DCLA uh, 2020. Uh, my name is Colin Todorov. I'll be your host uh, for this session. I'm also joined by Mark Waddell, who, is, uh, who will be the co-host. Um, and in just a little bit, we'll be hearing from Sindelin on um, the emerging role of the data product uh, manager. Uh, before I introduce our speaker today, uh, just a quick note, um, you could, uh, as a, all attendees are, are muted, but you could post in chat using the Whova app, and you could also post questions in the Q&A section of uh, the same app, and we'll get to those at the end of the talk. Um, so with that, let me let me introduce our, our speaker. Um, so uh, Cindy Lynn, uh, well, throughout her career, Cindy has uh, made complex information insights accessible to colleagues and customers, uh, yielding positive results across numerous industries, including technology, gaming, social media, research, and manufacturing. She has applied a set of data principles and product management tenets to her current role as a data product manager, which is the focus of her talk today. Uh, and personally, I would like to say that as a practicing data scientist and engineer, uh, I am very interested to hear what Cindy has to say. Um, so without further ado, um, let's welcome Cindy um, and the virtual uh, floor is yours. Take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Cal. Um, yeah, thank you everyone um, for joining me here today. I'm gonna share my screen now. All right. Um, I assume everything's working well. Um, you should be seeing my title screen here. Um, yeah, so um, yes, thank you everyone. Really excited to be here today. It's my first day at a con. And um, I'm here to talk to you about a role that I'm starting to see emerge in data organizations called the Data Product Manager. Um, I'm really designing this talk to um, really appeal to two audiences. One, those in data management and company uh, leadership maybe trying to figure out whether or not they need a data product manager on their team. And those of you who are maybe thinking is the data product manager role, um, maybe my next career path or, or a path I wanna pursue. So um, to get started, before we even talk about what a data product manager is, let's kind of do a quick refresh about what a product manager is. Um, so to me, a product manager is someone who solves problems um, using a, a set of skills. The first is customer empathy, understanding the pain that a customer is going through so that you can um, figure out which ones are the most acute, which ones are causing the issues and which ones they wanna solve. Um, using creative um, thinking, innovation to solve those problems. Um, using an analytical mindset, having an analytical mindset so you can um, not only prioritize what's the most important, but start to develop the metrics that'll measure how successful a product is and, and what is the next step to kind of move forward from there. And finally, relationship building. Typically, as a product manager, you're leading through um, influence. You're, you typically don't have a team reporting to you. Engineering um, typically, typically sits on a, a separate, um, under a separate uh, manager. And so it's important that you're able to build relationships um, so that you can get done what you need to get done. And so um, someone who solves those problems through these skills um, creates a product or creates a solution that um, typically is thought of as a product. Typically, the, this can be software, hardware, but I'd make the argument that anything that solves a problem using these um, specific tools is, uh, is, is still a product. It might, not, it might not be a technology. And so what is a data product manager? Well, a data product manager is very similar, someone who solves just data problems. Um, it's just more specific to data, um, but is still um, using those skills, same skill sets, and they're still creating a solution that is still a product. And so um, I think we as a data community have experienced, we know um, some of our most common data problems. I've listed some here, um, whether that's poor or insufficient data. If you look at that data and use that for analysis, you're not gonna get very accurate results. Um, maybe it's a skill issue. It's a lack of data analysis skills or lack of ability to communicate with that data. Um, that definitely is something that I've seen. Um, and then maybe data is either not utilized or selectively utilized. I've been at, unfortunately, too many places where people wanna go with their gut instead of going with data. And um, that's definitely frustrating. And so these are just some typical ones. I've heard so much more just in the last day and a half of this conference. I'm sure you guys have some, I've seen some um, really great discussions around it, but 
I would argue that these are probably the most common ones that I encounter in my day-to-day -day as a data professional. Um, and uh, I think this is something that often um, comes up with, again, data management, company leadership. Um, and oftentimes what I'm seeing more and more is um, they recognize that this is an issue. And so we wanna do something about it. And usually that's something is maybe implementing a data culture initiative, um, which is great, uh, except for I often find that those initiatives are not super well-defined. Um, it's pretty ambiguous who owns it, what success is gonna look like. And so I would argue, you know, solving a problem, solving these problems with a solution that causes more problems is maybe a place where a data product manager can step in and, and have a, um, a really uh, big impact. And so today, um, what I'm gonna be talking about for basically the rest of the, the talk here is um, how my current employer, Hopskip Drive, has used this role um, to really solve this problem of, um, of a, to create a data culture. So, um, and that's really through looking at the, um, the issues that they're facing and at least having at a high level a strategy of treating data as a product. Um, so yeah, so before we get into that entire story, let's just very quickly talk about who Hopskip Drive is. Um, Hopskip Drive is a company that's focused on creating opportunity for all from mobility. What that really means is that we connect students with our um, army of, of care drivers on our technology platform. We typically work with um, parents, schools, government agencies, and increasingly have been focused on um, making sure that we have transportation um, set up for our unhoused foster and youth with special needs. Um, we're venture backed based here in, in Los Angeles. I know not everyone is based here now, but um, yeah, that's, that's who we are. Um, and so uh, I started about a year ago and before I started, there was um, as a growing startup, there was a recognized need that um, data was a big part of how they wanted the company to grow. I think, you know, we all kind of understand, especially as data professionals, the impact, the value that data can have and leadership especially knew that. But what they were seeing is that they had, um, the individual employees were really struggling with how to use that data effectively and how to have that data-driven mindset. I think a lot of us, um, a lot of leaders want their teams to have. And so they really recognized that there were two main problems um, surrounding this and had two strategies in place to address them or wanted to implement two strategies. The first, um, let's, let's talk about the problem first. The first was the fact that there were over 200 workbooks or views in Tableau or data visualization tool. Um, and many of them were being underutilized, um, even though, and, and, and how that manifested is that the business intelligence team was still fielding questions around where is this data? How can I find this? What is this number? And it, oftentimes it wasn't complex questions or complex um, um, data that they were looking for. It was just like, what, it, what was our, you know, how much, uh, how many rides are we expecting to do tomorrow? That kind of thing. And so um, the high level solution here or the strategy that they wanted to implement, and I say they, I mean, company leadership wanted to implement um, was treating data as a product. Um, and there are some questions around that, right? Like what are the problems or really the barriers that are preventing that better adoption of the, those existing data dashboards? So that was the first problem. And the second problem was there were certain employees that were able to find that data, um, but still struggling to develop insights that they can then use to make decisions. And so it was really about bringing that product, that data to the people um, was the strategy they wanted to implement which really just means building up the analytical skills in each of those departments. So obviously that means some training, but you know, they, they acknowledge that the individuals that should be trained and to what level really varied um, amongst individuals and in just their, each of the departments. And so um, how they decided to go about this is uh, they wanted to hire a data product manager. And so um, we'll just share here um, some the mission that they had kind of put out um, as what they wanted this role to accomplish. Um, at, you know, I'll just read this out. Um, they want to, this role to accelerate adoption of business intelligence self-service, enabling the entire staff to take action at a greater scale while maintaining excellent service. I think that's great, but really, you know, let's break that down. It's just really about making sure that um, it's about democratizing data, right? Um, 
what I think is even more powerful is what the key outcomes for this role they were um, they were targeting, right? So um, this role was going to train members of each team to use Tableau, um, curate published data sources, build data products and models, and enhance data infrastructure. So it was um, clear what, what they wanted this role to accomplish. And so for the competencies, looking for um, first and foremost, product and project management skills, someone who could write and communicate effectively um, and also had really strong presentation skills. Um, definitely had some data skills. You can see the different technologies that were um, being requested here. Uh, someone who has already worked in data for a bit and also has some you know, people management skills, right? Um, and then lastly, some programming skills, Linux, Python, um, which I'll admit I am a little weaker there, but um, yeah, so that was um, kind of the makeup of the type of person. Definitely not someone who is starting off in their career, but um, can definitely someone who maybe has a little bit of BI, a little bit of product. And so who do they hire? Obviously they hired me. Um, <laughs> and so my background, I have an education or I have a sorry, bachelor's of science in civil engineering from WPI. I focused on transportation and traffic engineering, which was um, interesting when I came across Top Skip Drive because I had actually never done that as part of my career. Um, and so I was really interested in learning more about the company as a result. And in my own past experiences, my very first role out of university was as a process engineer and a statistics analyst um, working at Avery Denison, a Fortune 500 manufacturing company where things like Six Sigma were drilled into me. And I, I really um, understood the value of process improvement and, um, and ruthlessly prioritizing things, as well as um, quantifying things that were typically hard to quantify. So that was a big part of my experience there in building the foundation that then led me to um, a business intelligence analyst role at a social media startup, Victorious, um, based here in Los Angeles, and um, really just developing those technical skills. That's where I learned SQL and Tableau and um, understood also what the metrics were for a venture-backed venture startup. From there, I moved on to a product manager role at TSIA, which is a research and advisory firm um, where the product itself was data, information and insights. And so it was important that I was able to distill down that information and be able to communicate that in a digital environment to provide value to the customers at TSIA. And if that wasn't enough in the past few years, I've also been a product and analytics consultant um, for a gaming studio here, another um, also based in Los Angeles, um, just working on refining those skills, becoming a strategic partner for them and really thinking about how do we kind of take the data that they have and make product decisions off of it. Um, and also at the time I was looking for a product manager role at a mission-driven technology company. And so Hopskip Drive was a really good fit for me. I was a really good fit for Hopskip Drive. And so I've been there. Um, I started in November of last year. So just under a year now, I think we're about to hit two, uh, it's like two weeks to a year. So yeah, that's why I joined. And so what did I do when I started? It starts with that customer empathy, right? Exercising that customer empathy. So it was important to have a deep understanding of what the customer problem was. And so started with customer interviews. And the nice thing about this data product manager role is um, compared to other product manager roles, you're working with internal, your internal customers. So the people I was working with were also my customers. And so um, these interviews was meant to just meet the team, establish rapport and build trust amongst um, the people that not only was I going to be working with, but the people that I was going to be building products for. Um, it was also really important to, and I think this is true for every product manager, um, understanding their key risk job responsibilities and how the thing that I'm working on, in this case data, fits into their work lives. And that's not just asking them, hey, what's your problem with data? What are your data problems? Um, it's seeing um, how are, what are the decisions that you're making with data? Um, what are what's keeping you from making those decisions right now or um, what information do you still need? Um, being able to identify those problems in a more um, accurate way to what's really happening in their, in their lives. I interviewed 24 people, which was in a company of 100, um, was this definitely a significant chunk, but I just, I think that's super valuable. Um, I'll just set some expectations here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to do that um, at every single company, but. Um, I was very fortunate in that I was able to 
really um, touch a lot of people and, and really understand what the problems were. And so as a result, develop some pain points, um, create some insight around those pain points, right? Using that customer empathy and using some analytical skills to be able to take that qualitative data and distill it down into really three things. Um, there was just unnecessary time spent looking for answers. Um, oftentimes that meant multiple steps were really um, required to answer a single question or we were seeing um, teams rebuilding reports or pulling data that other teams had already built. There's also a lot of discussion spent clarifying data, perhaps because there was inconsistent terminology or there wasn't a consistent like source of truth for certain data. And so that obviously causes a lot of confusion. I'm sure everyone who's, who's been in that position can really relate to the kind of confusion that can cause. Wait, what do you mean there? What do you mean there, right? And ultimately what that really meant was that actionable data was underutilized. It was so difficult and tedious to do data exploration, to look at the data with an analytical mind that people didn't do it. Um, we're busy people, we're at a startup, we're trying to do all these different things, so it wasn't happening. Um, and those that could, um, it was only a few. So it was really just the business intelligence team and um, some of the executives. So that's what we were really working on. And you might ask yourselves, well, you know, didn't they already figure that out before they even hired you? They knew what the, the pain points were. Yeah, at a high level, but we, um, what you're not seeing is all the ways that those little things manifest and how to, um, and also hearing like what they've already done, right? So understanding what has worked, what hasn't worked. And so those customer interviews were really important to, in order to understand kind of um, holistically what's happening. And so uh, created a product strategy and a roadmap because I'm a product manager and product managers need to have roadmaps. Um, I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, so uh, what that really means is that I started with a data culture model, um, wanted to kind of have a way to frame the rest of the work that I was going to do. And so um, it's really three tiers, um, starts at the company level, um, and you can see the components that make up the company um, level here. First is trust, trust in the data. First and foremost, people need to understand and trust the data that's coming out um, that they're using. Next is process, some kind of framework to understand the data, um, transparency and metrics, meaning that there are, is an agreement across the company about what metrics we're using and transparency from the top about what's happening with those metrics, why they're um, changing the way they are and what we're doing about it. Not really covering that stuff up, being really honest with those numbers. The next is at the team level, um, wanted to develop tools that were designed um, specifically for those teams and what they were doing, their responsibilities, and making sure that there was a community just even within the teams that individuals were working on to feel like they were supported, not just by the BI team, but by others in their, in their um, more immediate kind of working life. And finally, um, developing stuff for the employees. So I'm um, thinking about um, making sure that employees felt empowered meaning they ask and they can answer, they have the capability to answer their own questions, which really means developing their talent. Um, we're intentionally recruiting, developing and retaining data talent. Um, and ultimately kind of the pinnacle would be if um, employees had a mindset that was really data focused, meaning they're using data to challenge assumptions um, and, and have the ability to do so. And so this is the model that you know, I just came up with, um, definitely with some help from Google, but um, this helped me kind of reframe everything else that I did. And so you'll see on the roadmap, um, I had um, kind of planned out um, starting in December of 2019 through the next few quarters, um, but it's also organized by company, team, and employees. So again, kind of aligned around those areas. And you can see what I did. Oh, excuse me. Um, and on top of that, because it is important to measure um, what you're doing using that analytical mindset to make sure that what you're doing is having an improvement, because if it's not, you need to, you need to refocus, right? Um, again, uh, metrics along the same kind of areas where it's based on the employee, the team and the company level. Um, and for the company level, we, we ran a survey um, and the idea was to run this every other quarter or, or twice a year. And so kind of baselining, this is where we're at with how people felt about the quality and of the value that, of the data that was being shared. Um, so not bad, but definitely room for improvement. Um, and so let's talk about how we actually um, 
get down to brass tacks. So what was the execution of this data culture initiative uh, of, uh, for me? So start off with, um, again, we're gonna follow that same kind of data culture model that I used, which was we'll first focus on the employee, uh, which uh, for them really starting to develop trainings around them. Uh, I thought about four levels of data training, first being data educated, which really establishes a baseline for data literacy, which is really um, target to everyone in the organization to make sure that they were all kind of on the same page about what we're talking about. We just kind of have that baseline. So that was really important. Um, building on top of that, we had the data explorer. Um, this one was really focused around building um, knowledge and understanding around Hopskip drive specific data and specific metrics, um, why you pick them, where you can find them in Tableau. Target audience for this was Tableau users. Um, so people who had access to data. Uh, making sure that they had the ability to find that information and can make decisions on it. Um, the third level is data evaluator. Now, something I haven't talked about yet is we uh, initially, um, when I had started, there was an idea to hire analysts as part of the, um, to sit in, in, in some of the teams that are a little bit more data focused. What we decided to do was to actually um, identify individuals on those teams that um, already had some data skills and developed them further. Um, and so these are what we call the team analysts that would really mainly interface between um, the data science team, or sorry, uh, the business intelligence team, we're not data science, um, business intelligence team and their own teams. And so um, this data evaluator training was really focused on building um, uh, skills with, within those team analysts to build their own reports in Tableau. Because another thing we found is that um, the majority of people who were using Tableau didn't need to be building their own reports. They just needed help um, finding the data they're looking for and understanding it. So that was why the Data Explorer one was so important. And that's what makes that one different from the Data Evaluator. So this one was really just focused on those team analysts, making sure that they understood how to um, build um, Tableau uh, workbooks off of the published data sources that the BI team had made available. And finally, um, the data evangelist um, training. This one was focused on training team analysts to build their own data sources. So taking those same individuals and kind of up-leveling them when it became apparent that the published data sources that were made available no longer suited their needs. So this was really just a review of SQL basics and data, uh, SQL and database basics. So that's on the training level. And that, again, focused on what's, what we're gonna do for the employee. Um, next was team dashboards. So these are probably the main data product um, that individual teams were gonna use. The goal of these dashboards were really to develop a tool that's specialized on that team's focus area and responsibilities. Um, even though if you, I, I didn't say this out loud, but the metric for the teams was to increase the views per user. And so we wanted to increase um, usage of the data, but we actually wanted to minimize the amount of time spent looking for that data. So um, ideally you're, you're looking at it, you're getting the information you're needing, and then you make a decision and you're, you're on your way, right? So really making it clear what to do next from that information. So um, that was the goal of that. And again, we wanted to continuously iterate because it's a data product, um, things are always changing. You know, the sales team doesn't have the same forecast every, every quarter or anything like that. And um, uh, as a startup, as the rule changes, it was also important that we recognize that um, we were going to continue changing what this dashboard was going to look like um, so that we could um, better tackle the real problems we're going to address right now. Um, we also reorganized Tableau. So um, we had all workbooks kind of sitting in one central folder, just needed some basic reorganization. Um, a pretty simple here, we organized things into one of these six folders. Um, we had our team dashboards, our first one, our operational workbooks, which if you click in is kind of organized by operational areas, um, by the teams themselves. Um, and then uh, the third is completed analyses. If you need to look back on, on old things, that's at the top level. The second level is, um, and that's available for, that should be um, what everyone uses. And then um, that, the second level here, the templates, the personal folders in the boneyard templates are what we've made available for those team analysts to kind of build upon um, to lower that barrier to get them started with creating workbooks. Um, five is just a personal space for individuals. 
and six, the boneyard is just an archive. So that was just like helping people find what they needed really quickly. And then finally, at the company level, we wanted to uh, have a space for people to train themselves around data. So um, it's all well and good if we do a training one time, right? But you need to exercise those skills in order to keep them robust and to make yourself feel more comfortable. And so this data gym um, uh, is a one hour weekly session that we make available to every employee at the company. And so it's split up into two parts. The first is um, uh, we, the first 30 minutes we review a data topic. We publicize this a few days before. We've done a number of different things in, um, in, this, in this session. So the first um, could be data requests that have come in. We build those right on the spot. We respond to those right on the spot. Um, maybe completed analyses either by my team or by other teams or even models completed by other teams. We're really a big fan of in inviting other teams to present at Data Gem because um, it hammers the point home that anyone could be doing this kind of data analysis. And also there are experts in your team that you can go and ask. Oftentimes it's the executive, but that's still someone that they can go to to talk to about some of this data. And the, and the executives, it's great because they have a lot of buy-in um, into this program. And so they're excited to talk about this stuff and they want their employees to do it. And so um, hopefully that creates a nice conversation. Um, and then videos from experts. We like played a Nate Silver video. I'm sure we'll play some videos from DataCon at, um, at an upcoming data gym. And then the second 30 minutes is just available time to answer typically analysts data questions. And so um, we just, we've done, we run the gamut of talking about specific Tableau issues, Excel formulas, where to find data, that kind of thing. So um, that's been kind of the, the more like you have a specific need, we can help train you there. And then finally, any good, uh, any good organization that has a, uh, that uses Slack, we have a Slack channel. Um, so BI Secrets is our Slack channel, just like every kind of data topic that could come up, we put it in there and it's all gravy. So that's what we did. And so let's talk about the impact, kind of what the future state looks like for my role. So um, the first thing I'm gonna talk again, moving back into what's happening at the individual level, we'll talk about the DNA trainings and how successful they have been. We launched the first three and you can see um, the percent that we wind up training. Um, say I, I wind up training. Um, the, the first two, what um, we realized kind of a little too late is um, we had included a lot of those individuals I'd already talked about that were already, you know, adept at using Tableau, had skills in data in that target audience. And so that's the reason that those numbers are so low, but you can see the data evaluator, we've trained a, a number of the team analysts and have more trainings coming up. We haven't launched the last one, the data evangelist one, because we are just not in a place where um, we need it. That kind of tells you a little bit about where we are with our data journey. So, um, so yeah, uh, not really needed quite yet. On the team dashboard side, we launched seven team dashboards, but also COVID. And so what this really meant was um, as an organization who was focused on driving kids to school um, as, as the, the only way um, that we were doing things, um, not the only way, but really the primary way we were doing things, um, things really significantly shifted when the pandemic happened. And unfortunately we had to lay people off. And so, um, we had launched some uh, dashboards prior to the pandemic um, that really just didn't, weren't useful anymore because of, again, they were supposed to be really specific to what they were doing at the time. And so because we had to really significantly shift the type of work we were doing, um, the data team really focused on um, how do we help bring down costs and um, make things more efficient with the smaller team that we have. Um, however, recently we, there are schools opening um, around the country, um, not specifically in LA, but um, even California, we're seeing schools reopen. And so now that things are kind of getting back to normal, um, we are starting to revamp dashboards. We've launched newer versions of those dashboards as, you know, what we've been working on has been changed, has changed and um, just launched the newest version of the sales dashboard really recently. Um, and then finally, talking about what's happening at the company level with the data culture survey, um, we saw an uptake. We ran another survey in Q2 of 2020. 
um, saw an uptick here in the perception of people's quality and value of data. Um, seeing the biggest change with the team, one of the teams that we work the most closely with, um, which is Marketplace. Um, but the sales team actually um, either rated things about the same or less um, or lower compared to the previous survey. And so that's why, um, you know, I just mentioned sales. We have been working a little bit more closely with them since we got the results of the survey to figure out how we can add more value for them. And so in summary, do you need a product manager? Well, do you have a data problem? Do you want that data problem to be solved with customer empathy, creativity, an analytical mindset and relationship building um, and getting a product out of that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of value in having a data product manager, especially as um, has kind of been highlighted across the conference the past day and I'm sure into tomorrow, um, data is becoming a bigger and bigger part of all companies. And so um, data problems will only grow. And so having a data product manager, I think really helps. Um, now, is it implementing a data culture, the only kind of data product or data problem that a data product manager can work on? No, I've worked on plenty of other data problems, um, things like customer data problems. Again, my last role, I was um, a product manager delivering data to customers, external customers. And even now in my role at Housegate Drive, um, I am spearheading kind of the reporting piece of our product um, because I really think it could be a big differentiator for us compared to our competitors. Benchmarking, helping um, the organization understand kind of how they compare against similar organizations. That's definitely a big data problem. How well am I doing? Um, and uh, in, in, yeah, where are the areas where I should be doing better? So the benchmarking. And then, um, you know, I think data science project scoping. That's another data problem I've seen um, in some organizations. Um, and, you know, it's definitely a problem uh, that just needs a little fine tuning before, um, the, before we can get to a place where um, the projects are scoped correctly and we can kind of execute and get things um, really, or models in place that are really effective. There's some examples. Um, yeah, so in summary, um, I want to, before I move on to questions, I just generally um, am really interested to hear about your stories um, around your data culture initiatives. I don't think that having a data product manager is the only way that you can get that um, initiative to be successful. I think um, it's certainly the way that we approached it, but um, yeah, if you have more stories, I'd love to hear them. Um, you can find me at my LinkedIn and my Twitter there, but otherwise that's it. Oh, and go remember to vote. Um, otherwise, are there any questions? All right, thank you, Cindy. Uh, I do see some questions. So let me read those out to you in the order they were asked. Uh, the first one is, uh, hi, Cindy, how many different products are you supporting in the data product manager role? Um, that's a good question. I kind of, again, think about it more as like problems that I'm supporting. Um, there's definitely the, um, the problem around data utilization um, at the company is kind of still my primary area of focus. Um, that's definitely the first one. And the second one is, is um, really a, a growing problem is how do we make sure our customers feel like they have the information they need to make their decisions. Oftentimes we're working with schools and government agencies. And so do they have the information around their students or writers or that kind of thing um, so that they feel comfortable with, you know, where there are and their safety and that kind of thing. So, so yeah, that's probably the two that I'm working on right now. Thank you. Oh, uh, just as a reminder to the attendees, uh, if you want to ask a question, feel free to. I think we'll have some time to answer a fair number of questions here. Um, anyways, so Cindy, uh, second question. Thank you for speaking us, to us today. Could you tell us what is the difference between a data evangelist, data evaluator, and a data product manager? Uh, data. Okay, let's start with data evaluator. I think that's most people should be data evaluators. Um, I don't think you need special training. I think you just need to um, be able to look at data and data is all around us um, and be able to make sense of it, right? Be able to uh, make decisions off of that. And I don't think that's just necessarily um, in your professional life. You have data in your personal life. Um, you know, I, um, and around like, I'll use a very specific example, COVID data, right? Like 
um, you know, you can use that information and make insightful decisions about what you want to do, your own personal choices about wearing a mask or not, um, and what your personal risk tolerance is. So that's data evaluator. A data product manager, I think, is just a is a role specific in um, organizations that have like a a fair amount of data capabilities, but have problem, problems maybe um, or issues refining and getting a lot of um, traction with solving them. Um, so I'd say that's probably a data product manager. And then um, a data evangelist, um, that was just a name I picked for that last training, but um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Someone who just like really believes um, the, the power of data. I think we can all be data evangelists as well. Great, great, thank you. Um, and one more question, which actually is my question. <laughs> um, how do you reconcile the kind of the inherently uncertain or probabilistic outcomes of building data products with like the very regimented oftentimes way that product management is done using like acceptance criteria, story points um, and all that jazz? Um, so I, I'll say you can still write acceptance criteria um, around kind of what you want the product to do. Um, and so is it, and again, I, I think you have some of those metrics that I had called out, right? Like how much are people using that product? Um, what kind of the outcomes are you trying to get? Um, I think that can be, and so we can apply that to like data, um, data models as well. Um, like, what do I want this model to achieve? I want this to reduce the amount that we wind up paying for rides. I'm gonna use upscale drive specific examples on average a dollar less, right? So um, how do we get that model to, to do that? And you might not have it before it goes into production, but at least you can evaluate it when you're, when it's out there. Um, uh, yeah, and then as far as, um, what was the first part of your question? Or did I answer it? I, I think it did, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Um, I am not seeing any more questions. Uh, so I guess with that, we can end the session here uh, a little bit early. And uh, everyone else, uh, even after, after the session is over, you could still um, attend the chat, uh, write in the chat uh, and post questions. And I would very much appreciate it if Cindy you could take a look at, at this. And if there's any other questions, answer them um, offline. Um, okay. Other than that, I would very much like to thank you um, for for this uh, for this presentation and for, for your insight answering the questions uh, and also thanks to everyone else for for attending. Um, that's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, next session start in eight minutes. So uh, catch something good. Actually, plug here for this for this um, uh, track here is that you, Cindy, you mentioned something about being a data. Um, data uh, analyst, was it? Uh, or that everybody yeah, has to export, be that. Yeah, export. Uh, and, and, and COVID. And the next session is about um, visualizing COVID data, which I'm kind of looking forward to. So anyways, that, that was my plug. Uh, again, thank you, Cindy. And thanks, everyone else. And I'll catch you later. Great. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Bye.